Madness here at uh, Juno Centennial Hall. It's Mendenhall Madness, and good evening, everyone. We're going to be starting with some roller derby action coming up in just a couple of minutes here. I'm in decline, and with me is T-Rex. Tyrant Rex. Tyrant We were going to go with Tyrannosaurus, but it wouldn't fit on a jersey. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Tyrant, we've got a really fun match happening today between the Fairbanks Roller Girls, the All-Stars coming down from Fairbanks, and the Juno All-Stars, the Juno Roller Girls, and their All-Star team coming together in a clash of titans. It's exciting. It's exciting to play another team that's not Juno. It's exciting to break out of the box. And I've never actually seen Fairbanks play, so I'm I like... I got to see them last year play. They were really exciting to play, uh, to watch play. They have a lot of veterans on their team. Their captain is a veteran, uh, so they have really uh, great experience there. Also, a little bit bigger city. they got a little bit bigger pool to draw from up there as well, so they've got a lot of talent. So it'll happening. be interesting to see how they go up. This All-Star, the Fairbanks All-Stars, up against the Juno All-Stars. Um, this is the first all-star game all -stars for Juno Roller all -stars. Girls. It's going to be pretty exciting to see <laughs> it's gonna that It's going to be pretty exciting. And uh, so we're going to be seeing the intros from both teams coming up in just a second here. And uh, we're looking for the track here. And here come, actually, the Fairbanks Roller Girls out on the track right now. And we'll, uh, oh. we'll, we'll talk you through. I don't know if anyone else has seen the Lego movie, but this is a great song. <laughs> All right, the Lego movie theme song. And we Yay. will go through. That's QWERTY, and that is the co-captain. She was here last year as well. And Sab Bob Taj is the other co-captain, and that's her right there. Jamie Lynn Smears is up next, number 17. And Psycho Senorita is the next one up from Fairbanks. Also, a delicious potato okay. dish, Poutine. <laughs> number 26. Lots of gravy. Alpha is next, number 42. Number 501 is up next, and she is Animal, animal Mother. Mother. <laughs> Who we got up, coming up next here? Mrs. Mouth, number six. Number 89, Gazelles from Hell. We also have 86, um, FN Heather. And then Moxie, Moxie Mall Maui Overdrive. Overdrive. And Virulence Factor, and you got to talk to Virulence Factor. I did. She's really awesome. We're going to see her at the halftime show. We'll get to learn a little bit more about her. All right. That's exciting and really fun to see. This, as you said, to see uh, the, big, uh, the big team in town here. This yeah. is... Uh, this is like Hoosiers here at uh, March Madness, the big town. I mean, it's really competitive in Fairbanks. <laughs> Even uh, V was telling me at the halftime interview it was hard for her to get on the team. It's not um, Juno Roller Girls. We have a small pool to draw from. We get more women every year, but uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this bigger town. Yeah, it's just, it's just big town <laughs> against we a small. We put the two of us together. Big city against small town here. I think I know who I'm rooting for. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and here come the Juno Roller Girls, the All-Stars from Juno, and uh, a really good team that they put together here. And there, by the way, is your derby uh, wife. My derby wife on the scooter leg. in the middle of the field here. Yep. She uh, dislocated her ankle and broke her leg in one of the scrimmages that we had at Marie Drake Gym. Um, but she's here now as a bench coach, I believe, in this game. All right, but first coming up, we have Gory. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, just Julie. Just Julie course, number the 11. Is just Julie. And B4U. Followed of course, by. That's combustible. Busta. Coming up next, there's Gory. Gory did a lot of jamming in the last game, yeah. so we'll probably see a lot of that here as well. Jean Claude, hot jam. Jean Claude Another is back great on the jammer. skates. She was uh, the bench coach last time, Some so fun to see her back work. out there. Fatty Here Duke. Comes Fatty Duke. Has out my there. favorite leggings of all time. Yeah, on. those skeleton <laughs> leggings. <laughs> They've also got screws yeah, in them. Yeah. They're being held together. And here's Skatey Bright. You'll be seeing, we'll be calling her number a lot today. Great blocker, especially. Uh, really specializes on doing great blocking strategy. Here's a okay, bitter, bitter glitter. glitter. Coming up. Just She's off coming of, out. She's coming around the track yeah, now. Yeah, just off of one of the being one of the winners Tight of the Wearable yeah. Art Show. Oh, here's, yeah. terrible, here's the Titan Young coming Titan around. Titan Young we also interviewed at halftime, so we're going to get to learn a little bit more about her. Great. Here's April Mayhem. We'll be calling her number a lot, one of the lead jammers for the Juno Roller Girls. Next, Vertebreaker. There she is, man. A lot of moxie. Shorty Moreno, of course, is the 
Uh, Your yeah, Derby shorty. wife, here she comes. Oh, there's my wifey. Oh. <laughs> She's still going fast. Yeah. She's got wheels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, here comes T, number 99. We already saw Kim Bustable, the co-captain, but coming up next was really the star of last month's Derby. Oh, here, here we comes go, Peach, Peach Clobber. She had a great Good foul last tonight. Derby. And Kylie Wyote and Wildbird are on the bench. Kylie Wyote and Wildbird Roller Girls. are on the bench. And Shorty right. Marina, unfortunately. Here is our Juno Roller Girl. So knowing the personnel they've got out there for this, what would you say is gonna be some of the strategy we'll see from the Juno Roller Girls? Are they gonna be using speed? Are they gonna be using a little bit more strength and size, what do you think? Well, uh, having attended practices, I guess the Fairbanks girls can't hear me from here, but yeah. you're gonna see a lot of a move, uh, one of the moves we've been working on is called the Caterpillar. Okay. You may see the jammer hit the Fairbanks line, and you may see the Juno girls come up behind and like pull all the blockers to the side. All right, well we're gonna hear the national anthem next coming up right here. setting up the mics here for the national anthem. Alaska Pella doing uh, the national anthem for us there. That was really fun to hear and beautifully done. We're getting ready to do it here. There's going to be an equipment check coming up next, right? What goes in, on in the equipment check? What's okay, so there? every single player needs to have their mouth guard in. They, like the rest will feel their wrist guards, their elbow pads, and their knee pads to make sure that everything is solid on their body and not wiggling around. Their helmets need to have no more than two finger width underneath the chin. And um, that's basically what they're looking for. They take safety pretty seriously. It's a huge liability issue. And as this is our first wolf to sanctioned bout, we want to make sure that we're following all the rules really carefully. All right. The Western, uh, what is it, wolf to Western, for, it's like this huge organization that Women's, Women's Flat, flat Track, track derby, derby Association. Yeah, yeah, something like that. It's, yeah, right. it's a really big deal if we can become a part of that because that basically takes Juno and like makes it one with all the roller derby in the rest of the so world. This it's is a more worldwide of, endeavor. This is more of that thing of Juno Roller Girls growing and growing and growing, getting bigger and bigger. Oh, yeah. Getting more and, and more think, official in a way. Yeah, and so if we can do that, we've now secured our 501c3. We can start growing a lot more as a league. So it's exciting stuff. It's, it's really like fun to see. Really exciting. Really fun <laughs> They've to see been happening. working on this for three years yeah. and now we're here. <laughs> Right. So, yeah, this is a big bout, yeah. especially because it's the first all-star game. And, yeah, I'm excited to see how this goes down. Yeah, it's going to be really fun to see how these, how uh, the, the uh, both teams kind of interact with each other. Um, when uh, Fairbanks came down last time, there was uh, it was a really good pitched battle, but uh, there were a lot of really experienced players on Fairbanks. You could see the experience difference, really. You could see the, the game-tested difference really, between the Fairbanks squad and the Juno squad. But I think it's going to be a lot, kind of a little bit more like a similar uh, style of play here this time around. I think, yeah, and it's hard, too, because we 
haven't really been able to see, I mean, we have 360 North, which is awesome, so we get all of, all of our bouts televised. Um, we haven't really gotten to see, and oh yeah, we do have a Twitter feed as well. Yeah, that's um, right. The Twitter feed, AK Derby, hashtag AT, AK Derby. Definitely worth checking out because we're doing a lot of, um, it's like an online Twitter feed and you can ask questions. We can learn about Derby as we go here. We're going to be doing a blog. Actually, people should go to 360north.org. Bring it up right now and you can uh, tweet anything. If you just hashtag it AK Derby, we'll be looking at that. We've got uh, some Derby uh, experts sitting on hand on and be answering questions as we go along. So if you have questions about the bout as it's happening, let us know. And uh, we're heading into, right now, our first jam. Let's our get into it. Our first jam. All right. Good heavy Peach block Clobber, right up there. Peach Clobber, Jammer. There goes Peach Clobber. Now, if you haven't seen it before, the ref that holds her we finger up. number 10, And Cordy, is pointing the out the uh, lead jammer. You can see the lead jammer coming through. And that is Peach Clobber. And she just got clobbered and calls it right there. Calls she it ran. right before Cordy comes up on her bag. Woo. Good she move. She ran into a wall there, man. It was a really great Animal fall. mother, I think, uh, really laid it on her there. Okay. Well, a good, strong hit to start with. Just Julie laid out the uh, main jammer for Fairbanks, and then Peach Clobber got laid out. So that's a good one. That what was I was going to say, bout. what's interesting is that we are not able to, um, like the Juno team isn't able to really observe what the Fairbanks team is working on. Uh, because they don't have video feed that they can play off of and they can watch for strategy and that kind of thing. So uh, Fairbanks may actually have an upper hand yeah, in that regard. They've, they've been able to watch these. They've been able to watch 360 North and yeah. watch what's going on. That's right. So, uh, yeah, here they come. The next jam coming through. That's April Mayhem trying to work her way around, and she has gotten through. There goes April Mayhem as the lead six, jammer. Miss Mouth jamming for the Fairbanks Roller Girls. Just Julie holding her back. And here comes April Mayhem. This is the first uh, opportunity for Juno Roller Girls to score some points. She's got one already. She's coming around on the other side. Miss Melf is through, but uh, Mayhem is already in her scoring pass here. Nope, she was. Ooh, that was a little fake out there, yeah. And called oh, for cutting the track. She cut the track. She's really, I think she's a little angry at herself there. She lost track of where uh, Miss Melf was at that moment and was a little confused. And lost track of the track. And lost track of the track and thinking about trying to call it. So that's... Uh, Miss Melf pushing through this wall of power. Just Julie and Skatey Bright holding her back. There she goes. She just she worked her way through it. Worked her way through it. That's an interesting technique. Nothing that Skatey Bright and Just Julie could do there. They, they worked as a team, kept her back as far as long as they could. Meanwhile, they've just got to hold her off for the next 40 seconds here of this uh, jam. Power That's jam. That's another big hit there. Power jam for Miss Melf here. Power hit by uh, Skatey Bright and Just Feeling Julie. she'll take it through. Gosh, she does a great job pushing this yeah, duo. Look at it's this. not hard to push. She's doing an awesome job. It's a lot of energy, but she's got it. There goes Miss Melf. She looks a little bit fatigued here coming around. I'll tell you, that's got to be hard pushing two skaters. <laughs> she's grinning though, she's got a smile on her face. Yeah. She's going for it. All right, coming around here, weaving her way through. Oh, and a hard hit there by Just Julie. Got her April out of Mayhem bounds. April Mayhem enters the track. Now here comes April Mayhem. A lot of whistles blowing. What happened there? They called it, the rest called it. Oh. Called the jam. She saw April entering the track and she called the jam. Was wait, 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 no, wait, but she April was, was lead. I apologize for that. Yeah, let's see what happened there on this uh, replay. Yeah, this is really great. Look at, look <laughs> I at love the how power she that she's just exhibiting. Just Julie and Skatey are not easy to push up against. Oh. <laughs> and then she, she just goes for it. All right, here comes the next one. We're back with live action. And being pushed out is combustible. Ooh, she almost had it there. Jamie Lynn Spears the, pushes through. She's got the lead jam on Kim Bustable. All right, you can see that red hair of Jamie Lynn Smears. Easy to see on the track, but Kim Bustable is easy to see too because she's usually like Stewart a makes the call before flash Bustable gets of light to the coming pack. through. Yeah. Good play by Jamie Lynn, Jamie, Jamie Lynn Smears. I wonder what she likes to go by. All right, Jamie Lynn Smears there scoring some points. Fairbanks ahead right now, 12 to four. And uh, really kind of low scoring so far, right? We've had three jams happen here and not a lot of scoring. It's been very strategic. And uh, with that first jam go going 0-0, uh, zero, zero, it's almost like uh, they've done it. They did a jam there without any points on the board at all. 
And coming up next, here we go. The next jam's on its way. These two teams, these uh, these specific players, these two teams, these two all-star teams have not gone against each other yet. It's the first all-star bout for the Juno Roller Girls. So um, it's going to be a rough game. We're probably going to see a lot of jams like now, here that. Here comes QWERTY coming through. She's the co-captain, and she just got through there quickly and got four. Peach Clobber is not lead jammer. QWERTY is lead jammer. She's behind Peach, and she can call it off before Peach gets to the All pack. right, it's going to be 16 to 4 here after that with four points scored by QWERTY. That's the first time we've seen her as a, a jammer out there, and uh, she was impressive. Had a really good move coming up, approaching quickly behind the kind of wall that had been built by the blockers and really kind of faked them out. Did a little bit of a sh uh, shimmy and a shake and uh, <laughs> got around that wall really quickly. All right, we're back to live action here with more jamming with uh, April Mayhem. And on the, uh, try to see who's on the Fairbank side. She's been forced out of the track over there. She's coming around on the outside. Oh, tough battle for oh, both man. jammers. Oh, and just Julie lays the muscle on, ga on Gazelle there. Gazelle from yeah. hell. <laughs> and uh, boy, did just Julie really let her April's know still trying what to a find block that was. Neither jammer has made their initial pass. Oh, T now. And April Mayhem is lead jammer, Gazelle. Still caught up in the pack, fighting the last member of the Juno Roller Girls, just Julie. You can hear the Juno crowd really into it here. It's clear who they're rooting for. Obviously, the hometown <laughs> crowd rooting for the hometown girls here. And uh, April Mayhem just trying to get her way through. And there she goes, and, and she, she calls, calls it. it. Four points for April Mayhem. That was a good jam. That was a really good jam. And uh, interesting to see you can see the skill level of the Fairbanks Roller Girls really high. Oh, yeah. Uh, this, and the way that they work together as a team and really work on strategy, there's these holds up that we haven't really seen a lot before. Just having to push through the two blockers, those techniques of just pushing and pushing and pushing, that sort of thing is interesting to see. We've been playing these home team games. Uh, Juno Roller Girls, we all practice together, so yeah. we all know each other's strategies. You know it's what really you know. It's really exciting to throw another team right. in there. What have they been working on? We don't know. Yeah, We're about to find out. You don't know what you don't know. <laughs> That's right. So here they come. Kim Bustable <laughs> fighting for Lee Jammer. She gets it. And Kim Bustable, a fast skater, really experienced. Number Very 42, skilled. Alpha. And here comes Alpha Breaks coming in. Breaks in the pack. Busts on her scoring pass right behind Alpha. She's going to need to speed up. Combustible kind of laying back. What's she doing here? And she chooses oh, to call, call it, it before Alpha can score any All points. Right. Interesting to see that kind of strategy employed there. Next jam of this bout is coming up right now, and we've got uh, Peach Clobber, who was so impressive in the last bout. Had a great bout, scored she was, a ton and of she's points. She's been training really hard. She's and, been doing uh, a great job. I don't expect anything less from this bout. She's. Uh, we'll see. I can't quite see the Fairbanks player from here. We'll tell you who that is in just a moment when we see who she's jamming against. She's been forced out. The Fairbanks player's been forced out. Peach Clobber is Peach a lead Clobber jammer. Through and she's lead. There she goes. Right behind her, though, is uh, Psycho yeah, Senorita. Senorita, who is a psycho. And she is dressed as such with the Day of the Super Dead face fast. paint. Oh, yeah. she came through. She got two points there. Good call on Peach. Wow. Psycho was fast. She had speed, that man. Exciting. That was Psycho. <laughs> She came around there, man. <laughs> there she comes. It's a replay. That is Peach Clobber getting, Peach getting just through. around and becoming lead jammer. To stay in the track right there took a lot of skill and power. And uh, there she comes around there, becoming lead Psycho jammer. I go right on her heels. Back to live action now as we line up for the next jam. It's 13 to 18. Fairbanks in the lead by five points with uh, about 10 minutes gone in this 60-minute bout. 21 minutes left in the first Number half. Number 10, QWERTY, the captain of the Fairbanks team. She's through, she's lead jammer, and April is still fighting the pack. And here comes QWERTY. She does that shake and move again, but this time it does not work. They did not bite on it this time. And they're still holding her back. 
Doing a good job holding her back. She has to call it. Just right there, she has to call it. She Not got sure two if points. April got any points at the end of that. I don't think that uh, April did, but you'll see that I know that Fairbanks did. It's going to be 20 to 13. She did get one point. One there. of the interesting dynamics of this game is that a jammer can call the jam. There's three whistles before that jam is over. You'll see the jammer behind still racing during those whistles because anyone she passes from the opposite team during that time, she gets points. All right, so she can still get a couple of points in there. If she, yeah. yeah, so you don't give up when you see no, the other. The whistles start blowing and you jammer. run faster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> interesting. All right, it's a seven point game now with Fairbanks in the lead, 20 to 13 over Juno. There's a little discussion here among the refs right now. I don't know what they're talking about, either scoring or. It was a so little we bit of an official timeout. A little bit of mayhem happening there at the end of that. <laughs> there was a little speaking bit of mayhem about, happening. Speaking there. of March Madness. <laughs> By the way, there, there's, sure uh, there's not just uh, Juno uh, fans in the crowd, there's uh, some Fairbanks fans in the crowd over there. That's Although pretty neat that they came down to support the team. They're holding up the QWERTY sign over there, <laughs> Alpha Male. I happen to know, there he is, Alpha Male. <laughs> There he is. Oh, Juno folks. That's Ty. Yeah, Ty, the Keltner clan, formerly of Fairbanks, but they're now in Juno and uh, it's good proud of their Fairbanks I, roots. I like that. I, like, <laughs> I think that's super fun. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Alaska Derby. Hashtag AK Derby. Check it out. Absolutely. Do it's that. It's growing. It's getting so big. There's like, there's a good, there, we're going to talk a little bit about that. There's a tournament. The second all-state tournament happens this year in Alaska, and we have so many new teams in a year. Wrangell, Sitka, Petersburg, Ketchikan. It's going to be a blast. It's just, it's gotten so huge in the state. And I'm going to get to talk to uh, the folks that are running the uh, the AK Derby hashtag and also the uh, blog on the 360north.org. So we'll talk to them at halftime, see what some of the questions coming in are. And we'll also talk a little bit more about that statewide uh, 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 derby roundup the that's growth, going to be happening. The yeah, development, the, growth of it. the expansion. It's It'll really exciting. Very cool. All right, we're back to live action now with the next jam coming up. And uh, here it goes. It's a seven-point bout right now. And we've got Kim Bustable jamming for the Juno Roller Girls. And she's almost through here, almost through, coming around. And, and jammer for the Fairbanks Roller Girls, still in the box. That's it quirky. starts as a power jam. This yeah. So that was exciting what the, for Busta. I think that's what the discussion was about and there. And she's through again. That's why the refs were getting together for that discussion was to talk about how that next this next jam was going to sure start that was fair. with the power jam. And QWERTY is in the box with the power jam. They've also got a nut, second. Uh, Busta's being goaded by like. So this oh. right now it's five against three. This is a double power jam here essentially, double secret power jam. Now it's only two. It's five to two here. This Busta's is a, still got the run. This is a moment for Juno to really start scoring some points. So here we go. If they they need to be able to get through here very quickly, does nice. And Bustable gets through with five more points right there. Here we go. This is the jam that Juno has been waiting to try to uh, get rack up a few points here. If she can stay in. Fairbanks jammer re-enters the pack, but they still have two uh, blockers on the bench. And she's behind Hot Dam and <laughs> Batty Duke and. <laughs> She just really got taken out there. Man, they were not letting her pass. And Busta calls it. Oh. <laughs> oh, that was rough for the Fairbanks girls. It's hard that to start with, with three players with a jammer and two blockers in the box. And then to come in out of the sin bin and hit that wall. Oh. Man, that was rough. That's a hard one. Yeah. <laughs> so that's some of the, I mean, that's part of the fun of the action is to Isn't watch those replay? hits. We've Here got, we go. Oh. Uh, Oh, and her leg kind of just bent a little under her. She looks all right, though. That has to do something for your psyche, too, coming yeah. in on those terms. Right. Next jam starting up here. And we have once again have uh, the uh, the red hairs, uh, the red hair of Jamie Lynn Smears Jamie Lynn there. Smears. Peach is through. But Peach has got through quickly. He's really re just Smears in her. still stuck in the pack. Oh. Peach is Peach Clobber is still in her just same. Just Julie taking advantage of that fall. Oh, man, just Julie has some grim determination on her, her face there. give her an inch, she takes a mile. Yeah, she's really, oh, and. Peach Clobber is through on goes. her scoring pass. Her number's Obi-Wan, and she Obi-Wan's a score right now, <laughs> I tell you what. Peach Clobber coming through. And here she is again. Ooh, took some, took a big hit there from Make as many points as she can mother. before she calls it, before Smear she got gets, it. Smears gets to the pack. All right. Now that was a turn in this bout. Look at the scoring change that just happened. They went into that 
they went into that jam behind Fairbanks by two points. They're now ahead by 23 points. Power jams make a huge difference, <laughs> especially if you got two blockers in the box. That really hurts. That right. really makes it hard for those two left on the track to keep your jammer from scoring points. So now Juno up 43 to 20 here. A great power jam. Kim Bustable laying on the, or, or excuse me, uh, Obi-Wan. That's uh, Peach Clobber laying on hot the Hot damn points. jamming for the Juno Roller Girls. And who do we have for Fairbanks? The first time we've seen hot damn uh, jamming here. We have the uh, we have we have uh, the crazy. Do we have the crazy one? Insane. Gazelle no. from hell. This is Sab Bobtage. The first time we've seen her jamming. She's one of the co-captains and an experienced, uh, very experienced uh, roller derby skater. Having to go back, she cut the track. She's having to go back to not have track advantage. She lays a hit or Takes tries an to. Offensive position on against Hot, hot Dam, Dam, but Hot Dam ain't playing that. She got through quick and then got laid down. All right, now she's coming back. So 89, around. Gazelle from Hell, jamming for the Fairbanks Roller Girls. Hot Here Dam is still Dam. in play, although not easily. easily. There now she she's goes. Calling it. The hot call. Dam's calling it. It's very possible here right. that uh, Gazelle has scored some points. All right, and Fairbanks coming back in with a little bit more of point scoring there as well. And uh, they're not going to go anywhere, I'll tell you that. They're going to be right back in this, is my, is my guess on where Fairbanks will be. This will continue yeah, to be a Yeah, 47 to 22 looks like a big number gap, but it takes one jam to just like. And you can see right now as Hot Dam comes around in this replay, right there she gets laid down, and there you go. Again, hashtag 8K Derby for uh, any questions you have or any feedback you want to give about what's happening here in Roller Derby. Here comes QWERTY, the co-captain of Fairbanks. And now the lead jammer. She's got the opportunity and ability pack. to she score. Through. And uh, QWERTY coming around now through the pack. Gives a little bit of a hit, but just Calls Julie it. holds her Man. ground. She's got three points there. This is a, sometimes they'll call this nickel and diamond a little bit, right? <laughs> is that the, they get these a few points, calling it real quick. Few points, calling it real quick. Not trying yeah. to keep going around. And uh, when you're up against someone like April Mayhem, I think it's a smart play. She's going to get back in it. She's got so much speed and ability to she score does. points quickly. She makes people nervous. They call the jam off maybe sometimes a little earlier than they need to just because they know that she's somewhere on the track with them. That may, be, that may well be what happened in that last one. Just just had to call it because they, she knew that April Mayhem was coming up fast from behind. Who's going to score some I'd call points. it. Yeah. <laughs> if April was on my tail, I'd don't call it. I don't blame her either. <laughs> We got a timeout right now happening, uh, and uh, Fairbanks getting together by their bench. Uh, Juno doing the same. Fairbanks gathered around there in a little bit of a circle. They're kind of having a powwow about what to do next and figure out uh, the strategy. They've uh, they were in control of this bout for the they first were. few games. They were, and when you said about nickel and diming it, like it's incredible how two, three, four points adds up, adds up, adds up. It's incredible the difference one jam can make. You don't well, we think saw it that. looking at the numbers. Yeah, they know that. that they're in a position right now to take it back, and maybe that's why they called that timeout. Just kind of a regroup there. They had that one power jam that really hurt them. Maybe just kind of regroup, fall back, say, hey, we're, you know, what we're going to do here, remember how the strategy we, How do we we're take it back? And here we go. All right, Combustible is going to be going up. I think uh, coming up next we do have Psycho Senorita, but we'll see. I think that's who that is over there for Fairbanks right now. Reps are setting it, and here it goes. The next jam is underway. And here comes Psycho Senorita. It is indeed her. We know that she speedy. is speedy, uh, speedy. incredibly speedy. Bus is through, though. Psycho got knocked out. Bus is through. She's lead jammer. I'll tell you something. The blockers for Juno are doing a really great job tonight. They are. Holding back these uh, very talented They're skaters from Fairbanks. And it looks like. Senorita might have, uh, might have experienced bin. a track cut there. She's in the box. It's now, a power jam for Kim Bustable. Oh, and Kim Bustable laid a really hard hit onto Jamie Lynn Smears. She went down hard. Here comes Kim Bustable again. She's, she's, you know, she's sort of a slight build, but a lot of power packed into that slight she build. She does, of, and uh, she's Kim very Bustable. fast on her feet. Yeah. As we're seeing right now, as she cruises through here. Oh, and then she's getting called for using an elbow. Now there cannot be two jammers in the box. So here so. comes 
the psycho one. We're herself. about to see a trade out. Right now, the score is 60 to 25. Fairbanks needs to score some points. And here comes Psycho Senorita. We've seen her speed already. Let's see what Taking she's going to do. She there's some power. Anything else. I'll tell you what. Ooh, it's oh, hard against boy. T. She's a tough one. But T was outside of the area where she was allowed to block. Is that uh, what happened there? So Senorita is free. Okay. If the player that hits you out falls down, you can just re-enter. I see. Okay. And that just happened twice for her. So she this got lucky. Is exactly what Fairbanks needed here at this at this time in this uh, bout was a was an opportunity to have a power jam and have someone like Psycho Senorita, who's got a lot of speed and power, multiple times get through. Now Combustible is back does. on, is right and she has there. called it. All right, we're going to sort out the scoring here. It looks like it might have been a uh, 35 to 60, uh, 60 point uh, total now. I think Fairbanks might get credited with a couple more points there, but we'll see what happens here. We're going to line up for the next jam right now. One of the refs rolling Apocalypse discussing the scoring with the scorekeeper here by our table right there. And uh, looks like the score is going to stay 60, 35. Good Fairbanks, turnout today. Fairbanks making up good ground. Yeah, lots of folks in the crowd here today. It's exciting and, uh, to see. We respect about from out of town. It's fun to fun to get excited for an all star all star game. This is the last game, Andy, where we get to call it a bout. Oh, they're no longer called bouts. You'll like that. I get, be always games. get tripped up on bouts. I thought I they're going to be games again. Games, okay. I can I can say games. <laughs> I know you I can. know. I say it all the time. <laughs> It's one of the things that the Juno Roller Girls talks to me about the most. So Stop calling call it, it a game. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was right all along. I knew it. I knew there was a we reason. Were just, you were just ahead of your time. I was ahead of my time. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, it's a fun, it's a, it's a, it's kind of shows you, you know, unlike a lot of the other sports that we're used to watching Calling a lot. an official timeout. This sport is a very new sport and rules and even definitions and even what things are called are changing all the oh, time. Oh yeah, this is gonna be, this rule set that you see here is gonna change the next bout that we play. It will be different. Yeah, it'll be different. So the main thing that happened. A little happened, nostalgic. Hold on to it while it's here. Right, Call it about bout. while, while it's you can. It's a bout. <laughs> it's a <laughs> war. <laughs> it's madness. Mendenhall Madness here oh. at Juno Centennial Hall. A beautiful day in Juno today. Did you get outside some? Gorgeous. Yeah, I did. It was I worth did it. it. I was walked beautiful. across the wetlands over to Douglas from Juno. Have you ever done that? No. Walk, walk no, across I the haven't. channel. The channel was so low, I walked across the channel today. I've heard it can be done. Yes. It's on my list of things to do someday. I did it today. It was really fun. That's awesome. My dog didn't think it was any big deal. <laughs> like, whatever. <laughs> yeah, whatever. I'm a, I could have done this if there was water. Yeah. I, <laughs> We're fine. I do this all the time. If you would just let me, if you just throw a ball that, dire <laughs> that direction, I'd do it. So anyway, but it was it's exciting. Part of what makes it so fun and fascinating and interesting to live in Alaska and live in Juneau especially. We love it here. And I know Fairbanks is enjoying the sunshine. Oh, I, yeah. Or I heard as much. Yeah, yeah. Mayhem out here, lead jammer. All right, here comes Mayhem. She's lead jammer. You can see she's just spotting up. Trying six, to Miss Melf. Yeah. Fighting through the pack. And we saw Miss Melf earlier and she was good. And she really kind of worked her way through, made some of those Batty early. re-entering the pack, Batty Dude. Points for, uh, for Fairbanks. And smears from Fairbanks. All right, here comes Miss Melf. Miss Melf is not Lee Jammer. April is calling it off before she gets to her scoring pass. All right, Juno scored some there. Four points going up for April Mayhem. So it's 64 to 40 now with Juno maintaining that pretty healthy lead. But as we saw, that healthy lead came about in one jam. Yeah, that Fairbanks can, had the healthy lead in the right. beginning. It's, can, it's hard to flip. feel secure in that place. All right, we're lining up next for the next jam here. What is it that's happening when they're first lining up before the whistle blows that they're waiting for? What are the refs looking at? Um, the refs are making sure that nobody's going to do a false start. If you do a false start, it's not the end of the world. You don't have to go to the box, but you do have to let everybody pass you up. I see. So people try to be careful. They get where they want to be by the time the whistle blows. It's sort of you have to be kind of set the way at the beginning of a football play, you have to be kind of set. You know, you're set. And if you uh, if you move, it's sort of like being called uh, offsides in a way. All right. Hot damn! Lead Here jammer. comes Jean Claude. Hot damn! She's exciting. 
Is she coming back a little bit from an injury? Am I right about that? Maybe uh, that was last season. No, yeah, she's. Well, she had a leg injury last season. She yeah. did have a leg yeah. injury last season. So yeah. She's been skating she, strong. She oh, and the whole pile goes down. Oh my goodness. Hot damn goes through it like she's a not ready hot to call knife it off through yet. butter. All right, you can hear the crowd cheering got for. Got 89 Gazelle from Hell coming up on her heels. And she calls it right there, I believe. Oh no, she did not. She did not call it because she got, she called. got called herself. Not sure what she got called for there. She was cutting track position possibly. She was kind of outside when she got called for that there. Gazelle from hell. This has got to be an exhausting fight. She's going for it. <laughs> Fighting for no pack. In Her some teammates ways, are holding them back. This slow approach to these last uh, blockers in some ways is interesting because it takes away from the potential power that someone like Just Julie could have. If you come at Just Julie hard and hot You're and not she gonna hits win. you, yeah. <laughs> that's not a happy place to be. <laughs> 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 I'm speaking from personal experience. Yeah. It's, you will get like the wind knocked out of you. Right, and so it's an she's interesting approach, smart. yeah, that she's just coming up behind her and then slowly working against her. And you can see that what ended up happening was just Julie got called for blocking outside of the uh, outside of the zone there. All right. We've so got we're a replay here. Gazelle from Hell fighting, oh, fighting through those general blockers. Here comes the here comes the pileup. Watch this, and they all go down. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Welcome to roller derby. Yes. <laughs> and Hot Dam was out on the outside of that, and luckily did not get caught up in that. Was able to score some points there, 69 to 50. Now as Juno still maintains his lead, but Burbank's uh, nipping away at it a little bit. Now a 19-point lead. It was up to 25 at one point. Purdy is is powering through this here, and it does not look easy. She's fighting so hard. Oh. <sighs> She stepped out, stepped back in. That is such an easy mistake to make. Well, she, it's almost like that was the only thing Cutting she could do track. without falling. Yeah, and uh, but she did get called for it. Hot Dam is already back in. Man, now she's coming back in, coming in off the sim bin there. Here so it's comes. Power Jam now from his Hot Dam, a Jean Claude Hot Dam. She is a nurse by profession. Out at Bartlett. Actually, I think she's she's got a new job uh, working kind of medevac sort of. Oh, line. that's right. You're right. She's doing the medevac stuff. She's a medevac nurse now. Stuff. That's right. So she's uh, she's doing that as well, and she uh, helps relieve pain. But that's not what she does on the track. <laughs> no, that's quite the opposite. <laughs> there she goes through the pack again. Really, watch how she takes hits. When she's in the zone, she gets hit, she lets it happen, she doesn't let it knock her off course, and then she just moves on. That's a great example right there. Beautiful. Yep. She's got right through there. And she knows she's scoring points also for every single blocker that's sitting in the box. Now here comes Cordy back in. She's looking to maybe try to score, score a few more points. She knows that Cordy's back in. She got through right Beautiful. there and did it. And I suspect she might call it now. Or um, it looks like she's going to she's gonna take the risk on any points that Cordy might score. She's going to go for a little bit more herself. Now she's setting up. You see, you put her hands on her hips there to set up. She got back through again. And there and she ran called out it. the clock. Oh, I, no, I think she called did it she, there. Oh, did she call it? Yeah. Now here comes here comes Cordy stepping this track. Talk us through what's happening here. So this pretend right like there. you're her. What can it was you do? A step. Yeah. It was a what step. It do? is so hard in that moment because like by the time you realize that it's happened, you've already put your other foot down. And that's cutting and you're the track. The and that cutting the track means you're gaining an advantage outside of the track. Yep, you've gone outside the of the bounds players, and you've yep. come back in illegally. All right. Well here. Comes Jamie Lynn Smears. We've seen her before as the one Up against of the, Just Julie. And she's doing the same technique of just staying the same speed, pushing, not pushing, using push, her push, hands, push, push, push. making sure she's not and using she's her through. hands, and she got through. That was well Lee done. Jammer, combustible, combustible, meanwhile, coming around. Already outside the pack. We've and got uh, Sab Abtaj re entering to assist Miss Smears. Oh, and Miss. 
Jamie Lynn Spears goes down and calls it as she falls. 92-60 now, Juno gaining a lot of advantage out of that Jean-Claude hot damn jam. 92-62, yeah, they got which, a couple points out of that. Yeah, Fairbanks got a couple points out of that. They got a couple, but um, Jean-Claude really racked up some uh, points there. She that did, was good, that was a great power jam. All right, coming up next, here it is. The refs are looking over this next jam, making sure everything's set up. Each clobber for the Juno Roller Girls. And who do we have for Fairbanks there? I can't see her from here. I'm Number 42, block. Alpha. My view is being blocked by Chicken Hawk, the lead ref. And it's interesting as you're watching, and we were talking about the game with one of the games within the game here. Alpha fights through. She's lead jammer. Of uh, roller derbies to watch the refs and to sort of see what they're doing, what, all the movement that's happening with them. Watch their arms. The screaming, the yelling, the blowing of the whistle, the outside refs, the inside refs. If you're ever confused about what the call was, they're usually doing something huge with their arms that lets you know. And Alpha calls it. Now, is there a rule about a jammer? Jammers, can they do consecutive jams? Is there any reason they couldn't do consecutive jams? It seems like they sub um, back. You can do back. consecutive jams. You it's can. just tiring. It's, it's obviously, exhausting. yeah. It's exhausting. Right. It is so hard to push and shove against someone who's pushing and shoving against you and to get knocked down and get back up and keep going as fast as you can. It's, being a jammer is a hard life, but um, I'm sure there's a lot of fun to be having <laughs> <Yeah>. as well. <laughs> <laughs> when you watch them grin, you know, oh, yeah. that's why they're doing it. Right, right. <laughs> but yeah, typically, typically you'll rotate out jammers. Titan Young holding Cordy back. Well, Cordy got through. And Titan, we'll talk to her a little bit at halftime. She's got a little more experience with the Fairbanks girls than the rest of us. That's actually where she started playing. Oh, okay. Um, Mayhem Cordy hot on the heels. Calling it. Yeah. Cordy could sense the coming mayhem <laughs> and like called that jam. 92-66 right now, the score with about three minutes left in this first half of action here at March Mendenhall Mayhem in Centennial Hall. As we were been talking about, you got to talk to some of the uh, roller girls from both Fairbanks and Juno. Be talking to them at halftime. I'll go up and up into the booth, and we'll be uh, seeing what's Checking happening online Twitter as page, well. Yeah. AK Derby, hashtag AK Derby. Check and it out. You can also go to 360north.org. That's right. All right. Start being part of the Alaska Derby Nation. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Here comes Combustible. Oh, psyched out Animal Mother well there. Well done, Combustible. Just, that's just speed kills right there. Combustible coming through. We've got Smear stuck behind. Julie always at the front of the pack. Always ready to take you out if you haven't been taken out already. Oh man. And Combustible was so pass. fast right there. Combustible came through so fast. Smear's playing a little offense. And she got that it was one. Worth that was try. It was worth it because she knew she wasn't lead jammer. <laughs> and if she could have taken Kim out at that point, yeah. she might have given herself an advantage. That's right. But it was also fun to see Combustible saying, I'm going to nope. get this one <laughs> last point right now. And faking her out, doing it, and just using it with the finesse. Really, she's really a finesse skater in she a lot is. of ways. You know, she's it's, got I, I love watching great moves. Yeah. the evasion tactics that yeah. she uses are fun. All right. Another part of this uh, game that I always am learning more and more about and seeing more about is the blocking techniques and what's happening with blocking. It's the, the, the kind of easiest way to track what's happening in a, in a Peach bout. Peach Clobber lead jammer. And in a jam is to watch the jammers as, you're, as we're it doing watching, and calling. You're watching the blockers really does tell you a lot about the team and how they've been practicing. That's right. So this is not the uh, blocking lineup that they've been using as much. This is Vertebraker T. And uh, and then the hot dam in there now also in Titan, there Titan, Titan Young Titan as well is in there as well so that's the lineup and so Miss Melf here jamming for the Fairbanks Roller Girls the Juno Roller Girls have that core blocking tandem of just Julie and Skatey Bright that seem to really work so well together and they have do. a They've lot been of playing since the very beginning plays with together each other. so it feels like that's a really strong lineup when they have those two in and uh, they're back in there now. 
but the Actually, play just that Julie is I not do want to see that caterpillar in play today. I really want to see that caterpillar in play. We've been working oh, on it okay. in practice. Okay. What you'll see if it happens, you'll see the Juno Jammer come up against the Fairbanks wall, and then you'll see the Juno Blockers wipe them all out from the oh, side. Oh, interesting. All right. Let's see if we see that today. And there's Hot, Hot Dam, Dam up against Murray a, for the Fairbanks Roller Girls. There. And there's Just Julie back in as a blocker. Mayhem stuck behind that front line. Quirty oh, has Fairbanks come around blockers. as uh, looking great. Yeah. And Quirty is lead jammer here coming around. Right now through that pack and she's almost through Just Julie. Hot Dam holding her back. She's through. And she's got four points there and she wants to call it. Hot Dam, who we're so used to seeing jamming. It's so cool to see her also kind of rocking as a blocker. It really is. If, you know, and she was doing that so Mayhem had time to get to the pack, and that was really cool to see. All right. 104.73 is the score right now. We've got uh, halftime coming up right now. That was the last jam of that half, of the first half. So 104.73. Interesting. I wouldn't have predicted that in, I the, in the first 10 minutes of this. I wasn't sure what to expect. This is interesting. Yeah, in the first 10 minutes of this bout, I would have said, okay, this is going to be really neck and neck. This isn't a score that's out of control by any means, but it's interesting to see that once Juno got that upper hand, they've really been able to maintain it. Yeah, and something like when you're playing a team from out of town, it really ups the ante. You're going to see the Fairbanks, like after this halftime, you're going to see Fairbanks Roller Girls come back with a certain kind of vengeance. And I'm not sure what that looks like yet. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'm you'll excited know it when to you see it. I know it when I see it, and I'm excited to see what it looks like. <laughs> and and, and kind of see how, because Juno knows that at this point they have to maintain, you know, they have to maintain if they want to keep this advantage. Yeah, so. they're going to have to keep it together. Well, speaking of all these different uh, great athletes here, you got a chance to talk to a few I of did. them. I did, yeah, at, yeah. Uh, just before the bout, and we're going to take a look at those interviews right now. of the Juno Roller Girls and the dam ref of the Fairbanks Roller Girls. Um, could you guys please uh, get us started by just telling us about what it is that you do for the team? I am the lead medic for the Juno Roller Girls for the last uh, three bout seasons. And I'm a referee for the Fairbanks Roller Girls. All right, very cool. And how did you get involved with your respective positions in Derby? Uh, for me, there was um, a lot of friends that I knew during Derby and a lot of people at the hospital involved, so I kind of got involved that way, and uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. I've uh, seen Fairbanks had something on uh, way back when there was MySpace. They were uh, starting, <laughs> and, uh, Don't date yourself. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and um, emailed them, asked them if there was a skating position for guys, and they said there's, they need referees, so uh, signed on as referee. And what was it that, like, that made you interested at all that made you want to go out for that when you you know um back in washington uh me and my kids used to go uh skating all the time and then when we moved to fairbanks there's no roller skating rink so we uh got involved in skating so we could continue skating and have you been to juno before this is my third time here with derby so, <laughs> juno's awesome <laughs> Um, and, and uh, Doctor, I keep wanting to call you Amy, <laughs> Dr. Dreadful, uh, how long have you been involved with the Juno Roller Girls? Uh, for the last three years. Um, I've also done the skating class a couple times, so it's a lot of fun. It's a great workout. So, How do you, how do you feel about being off skates? <laughs> I'm probably a little bit more comfortable off skates. I'm getting better on skates, but I'm, yeah. So we have some pictures here that are pretty cool um, from your life here in Juneau. Can you uh, describe this first photo to me? Oh, that's one of my many fans. I have lots of uh, fans that are probably, my mom says that my best fans are three feet and smaller. So that's one of my, that's one of my favorite friends. So I'm alone. <laughs> uh, and I, I understand that some of your fans might come from uh, some of your other Juno activities. I know that, um, this year you were crowned the queen of the wearable arts show. <laughs> <laughs> it's my 12th year doing it, so yes, that was nice a surprise. So, but yeah, it's, it was a fun year. And tell me about this other friend that you have. Uh, that's my mom's puppy, Estes. Uh, he's almost two and he's uh, a brute, but he's a fun, he's a fun companion for going outside. Another one of your three foot fans. Four foot fans, but yeah. <laughs> Four footed fans, I guess. <laughs> 
and then the damn ref. Um, first, really quick, I'd like to ask, how did you get your name? Um, just growing up watching sports, uh, you're always cussing at referees and stuff, so I wanted to pick a name sort of along that line to go when you're watching sports and you're talking to referees. God damn it. Sort of embrace the anger of the skaters. Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good kind of derby love. I like that. And uh, can you tell us about this first photo here? Um, summertime, me and my kids, we go up hiking, Denali Park, go up Savage Creek, go up there and hike the mountains, play in the snow, take the dogs and stuff, and do a lot of family time up there. Do you guys do a lot of traveling? We like to get out of the uh, Fairbanks as much as possible, so <laughs> see uh, other parts of the world or life. So who's who's this other friend that you have here? Uh, that was when uh, we went down to Port Arta. We went swimming with the dolphins and sea lions and uh, made a new friend. <laughs> <laughs> also looks like you play some pool. Yeah, I've been playing pool for about 20 years and I like to play uh, when I have a chance. What would you say are the most important hobbies in your life? Um, roller derby, pool. Your kids. My kids, my Mustang. Ooh, oh. wow, Mustangs, <laughs> all right, I'm classy here. Yeah, uh, and just a last little thing about being a ref in Juneau. Um, your girls are out here, the Juneau girls are out here. How do you remain impartial as a referee when you travel? You just always, uh, you have to be neutral. That's just, that's the main important thing of a referee is being neutral. So if you don't show no reaction towards either team, you know, and you just, uh, you know, cheering, you know, and, uh, just be totally neutral. Even deep down in the depths of your heart, there's no tiny part of you that's like, come on, Fairbanks. Nope, nope. And uh, the uh, Fairbanks Roller Girls will vouch for that. There's times where they're yelling at the damn ref at me. So <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And Amy, what do you enjoy about being able to be here and be the, uh, like, enjoy the most about coming to these bouts and being the medic? Hopefully you don't have to work too yeah. hard. Yeah. That's so nice. I enjoy not having to work. That's kind of nice. Um, I enjoy the energy um, and enjoy watching the girls do what they do best. And what other kind of stuff are you involved with in the community outside of like wearable arts? and? Um, a bunch of other things, particularly around children. Um, oh, I heard on the radio that the proceeds from this are going to be going to uh, uh, Girls on the oh, Run. Yeah. It's an excellent program to teach young girls how to be empowered and to uh, train for a 5K. So that's a great program. I do that. Um, there's a lot of things I'm involved in all around the town. You know, as far as anything for kids, you know, I'm there. So. Well, awesome. Well, this has been really good talking to you guys and meeting both of you. Um, we'll cut to Andy. <laughs> Coming back live here at halftime at Centennial Hall of this really great bout that's happening so far. As uh, T-Rex said earlier, it's the last time I can call it a bout, so I'm going to call it a bout now. It's changing over to a game soon. But we're here right now to talk a little bit about a really fun thing that's happening that all of you are participating in, and that's hashtag AKDerby on Twitter and also 360North.org. I'm with Sarah Yu, there's the new media editor with 360 North. Sarah, what's been happening online here so far? Well, there's been really great participation. A lot, a lot of Fairbanks fans, a lot of people cheering on Q, you know, every move that she makes. Um, we actually have a poll going on right now. Would you rather be a blocker or a jammer? So if you actually have an opinion about that, you know, go online and vote. You know, keep on using the hashtag, but it's been great. I should also introduce right here as well, Jane Bondage, and we'll talk to you in just a second about all the great stuff that you've been doing. And you've been standing by as well as one of the authorities right. of roller derby in uh, Alaska, standing by and helping answer some of the questions that have been coming in. Absolutely. There's a lot of questions with Derby. I think that people just really, they think they understand the game and then something happens and it's like, oh no, now what? I don't understand. But uh, it's not that complicated. That's what happens to me every time I call one of the games. Yeah. I don't know what's going on half the time, but it's, it sure is fun to watch and fun to commentate on. So what are some of the top questions that people are asking about? Um, there haven't been that many questions. I kind of get the opinion that a lot of the people who are watching this are actually, you know, roller girls themselves are following the game. They're actually been, they've been making like really insightful comments that, you know, I or Cart Heartless actually haven't picked up on. So it's so a little bit of inside baseball kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Well, Jane Bondage, let's talk a little bit about roller derby in Alaska, um, the growth that it's, uh, you've kind of been there since the beginning of the growth of it. Tell me a little bit about how long it's been and some of the growth that you've been seeing. Well, you know, uh, Rage City down in Anchorage and then of course the Fairbanks Roller Girls have been the predominant uh, 
group of roller girls here in the state of Alaska until about four years ago when the Denali Destroyer Dolls, my team, burst onto the scene. And now you're looking at uh, Ketchikan, Kodiak, St. Petersburg, Wrangell, uh, Kenai Peninsula, Fairbanks also has the North Pole team. Uh, the sport of derby doesn't just appeal to women. It, it, it is mainly focused on women. It's that sport that uh, individuals that are big, tall, short, small can all join and come together as a team and really feel that bond that supports one another. But my husband, uh, my brother, my brother Mantastic, my husband uh, MGD Slayer, my son Polar Assassin. I mean, it's kind of like a family. You can find how, just all the little pieces fit in. Uh, some people have been doing derby for a couple years now. Dollar Bills and Jet Black and uh, Candy Coated on the Denali Destroyer Dolls have been around for the whole four years. You've got people like QWERTY and Sababob on Fairbanks. And uh, Anchorage, of course, the original group of girls that started all are still around, but they're helping grow and nurture that new group, uh, as well as now we have juniors in the state as well, seven to 17 year old girls that we're all working with and coaching and, and helping them to become empowered young women. Uh, one of the things that has happened in Alaska, even though we're so geographically challenged, is we really come together. And one of the things that uh, Fairbanks started was with last year was a statewide tournament. And we've been blessed with the opportunity to host it for a second year in the Matsu. So tell me a little bit about that. This tournament, that must be a pretty wild experience to get a whole tournament together of all these women and men, as you say, mm -hmm. who are pretty fanatic about roller derby. Well, as you can figure, everybody is coming to the Matsu on May 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. Uh, we're having an all-star bout, so um, there's a couple different levels in derby, everybody from people just starting to roll to people who really know what they're doing and teach others. Um, so we're having an all-star bout, which will be people like QWERTY and Sababods, and now that uh, Juno has all-stars, as well as some from the Dolls and some from Boomtown and some from Far North, and uh, they're all gonna come together on Friday night and take on the Orange Crush Girls, uh, which is the Rage All-Stars, because they think they can beat everybody, and they're pretty <laughs> awesome. They are pretty maybe, awesome. Maybe they can? Well, we're gonna find <laughs> out. It's kind of gonna be like uh, heroes versus villains type of thing. And then Saturday and Sunday, we're bringing in a trainer from the outside, a Dirty Debbie Harry, um, and people in Derby pretty much uh, follow her fanatically and uh, how she comes to the sport and what she brings. And we're also having a referee camps as well as junior derby training. So those three days in the Matsu are, uh, if you're interested in Derby or you just like to come out and support your local team and buy local and shop local, come to the Matsu. We have all our information on the website, DenaliDestroyers.org. You can buy tickets or you can just find out about Derby. All right. Well, we're going to find out more about Derby in this second half, for sure. You, people can find more, out more about Derby by just uh, tweeting, hashtagging at uh, AK Derby, or they can also go to 360North.org. And what are you seeing? A little bit more participation this year? Yeah, definitely. Or not this year, but this bout, over last bout? Yeah, definitely. Also, um, if you happen to miss the first half or part of it and you have to leave, um, our YouTube channel, the uh, 360 North um, Digital, actually ha is, uh, we now have a Roller Girls playlist. So go on Monday and, and uh, watch the Derby again. That's awesome. Roller Girls playlist. Love it. Well, we're going to talk to a few more Roller Girls right now. Where T Rex got to talk to a couple of more girls, and you'll meet them right now. Thank you very much, Andy. And I am back with V of the Fairbanks Roller Girls and Titan Young of the Juno Roller Girls. Um, can you guys please tell me uh, what your number is and what the relevance of that is and maybe a little bit more explanation on the names, V. So my name is Virulence Factor um, and my number is LD50. Um, when I was thinking of names, I wanted something tough, but I wasn't very creative, and I'm actually quite nerdy, a science nerd. And virulence factors are what I study. I'm working on my PhD. And then I picked the number LD50, which is a calculation for the lethal dose to kill 50% of a population. That's an awesomely nerdy and devastating derby name. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you go by V? Um, virulence factor is kind of a mouthful, and when you're out there skating, it's you can barely get out V. People <laughs> <laughs> are like, oh, I'm fabulous factor yeah. over here. Oh, I like that. I like that. It's very cool. And Titan Young. Um, so my uh, my husband's my husband's best friend Philip actually came up with my roller derby name Titan Young, 
Um, my last name is Young, and that's kind of what it stems from. Um, and then Titan is, uh, of course, from Greek mythology, the Titans, um, very conveys a sense of strength and power. And uh, so my number is 25, which 25 is a number of original Titans in Greek mythology with names. Uh, so that's kind of what it all comes from. And I know from personal experience that you are a titan when you hit people on the track, and you have that to look forward to. Um, we also have some pictures here. Uh, can you can you kind of help me out with this first photograph? It looks like you're with a horse. Yes. Um, yes, that's Pistol. Uh, I'm, I have a coworker that I'm friends with, and she has a horse who stays with another um, guy who has several horses. So I get to go and ride horses all summer long, and we take them on trail rides around Fairbanks, and it's a lot of fun. So um, you also have a motorcycle here. Is that like your like horse replacement? Yeah, it's my uh, gas-powered horse. Mm -hmm. And I uh, learned how to ride the motorcycle and joined Derby about the same time, um, April of 2011. And on my motorcycle, you can see there's a dog seat. It's called the Beast Rider, and my dog rides with me. That's awesome. Does your dog have a Derby name? Uh, no, her name's Kaya. Uh, she's a Pembroke Corgi. And then the other picture is my cardigan corgi. I went to Boise and got a puppy. Um, he was actually born five hours after the United We Roll uh, Derby tournament last year. Very cool. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that tournament? I don't know if everybody knows what it is. So it was a statewide Alaska tournament. Um, it was last year was the first year Fairbanks Roller Girls put it on and we invited all of the Alaska teams and Yukon from Canada and it was a huge tournament with all the teams. There was also a boot camp. We had trainers. And this year, Denali Destroyer Dolls are hosting the tournament, and we will be there again. That's awesome. Um, Titan, did you get to go to that tournament? Yes, I did. I was at the United We Roll tournament in May last year and actually skated against V here. But uh, I used to actually skate with V when I lived in Fairbanks. Uh, I joined Derby in December of 2012 up in Fairbanks. and. Um, V and I were drafted to the Fairbanks um, Gold Diggers, their home team, at the same time, actually. So we've known each other for a really long time, and um, V's already had the opportunity to experience how I hit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I didn't know that, but that's pretty cool. Did you guys ever get to skate together? We were I think in the first bout, yeah. Uh, we skated uh, against the Raven Rebels together in a home team bout in Fairbanks, and then we also skated together against the Juno Roller Girls last fall in November? Oh, no, October. Yeah. October of last year. So what's it like getting to like see each other this once every so often that you get to play a game? It's a lot of fun. I look forward to it. Do you know other girls on the Juno team? Slowly. I'm slowly learning them. Just Julie and uh, Skatey Bright. That's cool. I wanted to talk to you um, about Fairbanks because we do have a photo here of you in Fairbanks and you're, you're kissing something. I can't quite make out what it is. Uh, so I'm kissing an ice carving of a polar bear. Uh, it uh, is a good representation of my time in Fairbanks, hanging out <laughs> with uh, a lot of ice. Uh, it's actually at the World Ice Art Car Carving Competition in Fairbanks, which is held every spring. And um, so while I was in Fairbanks going to college, um, every year we would go to the ice art competition and take fun pictures with all the sculptures, and that was one of my favorites. And what are these other photos here? Uh, well, the one with me in a hard hat shows what I do to make a living to support my derby habit. Um, that's me on my construction site. I work for the state of Alaska as a, um, a civil engineer um, contract administrator. And my current project is the State Library Archives and Museum project, which, if you're here in Juneau, is um, right behind the prospector um, in, on the property behind the existing Alaska State Museum. Yeah, pretty big deal. We don't get to see those kinds of cranes very often. All right, and the last picture is a, a little snapshot from college. That was my mud volleyball team during Spring Fest a couple years ago. So derby isn't the only thing you do. Oh, no. I uh, definitely uh, try to keep myself busy both on and off the track. I, uh, I don't play very many, haven't ever played very many organized sports. Derby is really the first on that for me. But I do like uh, community sports and like pickup teams and try to stay active. V, have you played other team sports besides derby? Yeah, I've played uh, softball, soccer, basketball, volleyball, and I did throwing and track. What was it like when you first started skating? Um, I've never skated before I tried out, so I've learned how to skate and derby through Fairbanks Roller Girls. 
what did that feel like though? What does that process for? Because I feel like a lot of people see you guys skating out there and it's like, oh, well, they were obviously born with skates on. But that's not the case. And I don't, I don't know that it's been the case for anyone. No, there's definitely a learning curve, but you get what you put into it. And I really liked it, really passionate about it and try really hard. And Titan, for you, when you first started skating? Um, well, I actually I learned how to skate when I was a little girl. I grew up in western Washington, and the whole roller skating rinks going out of style never really hit the Seattle area. Um, so I, I grew up going to the roller rink, so I knew the basics of skating, um, but I still couldn't do a crossover when I joined roller derby. So I learned a lot after joining um, the Fairbanks Roller Girls. Um, definitely um, learning the rules, learning all the basic skills. It takes a while. Um, generally speaking, um, like shortest turnaround time is like three months or so, unless you've already been skating. And then, um, you know, some girls take up to up to a year and a half, two years to be comfortable um, and ready to try bouting. So it takes time and dedication, but it's so rewarding. As, as V said, you get what you put into it. So it's really worth making the effort. And then the next thing you know, you're out here on the track having these kinds of crazy times and like, you know, there's there's not many experiences that can compare. This is so cool. Thank you guys so much for having this interview and uh, we'll get back to the halftime. Thanks. And we're and we're joining action right now in the second half of this great bout that's happening between the Juno uh, All-Stars and the Fairbanks All-Stars. The uh, point differentiation is about the same right now. It's 110 to 81 with uh, almost 30 minutes left to go here. And we are starting off with Qwerty here as the lead jammer for April Fairbanks. April Mayhem close on her heels. Going up against April Mayhem and Qwerty is trying to fight through that wall once again. There's Jean-Claude being tough in there and making QWERTY call it uh, quickly. So uh, just got uh, two points there, 83 to 110. Great interviews at halftime there, uh, T-Rex. Thought those were so fascinating. That was fun. It was fun to meet some Fairbanks folks. Absolutely, yeah, and just people who have been doing it for a long time yeah. and are just really committed to the uh, the whole sport uh, and the growing sport of roller derby. Yeah, Fairbanks is an older team than us. They have more experience under their belt. Um, I mean, different experiences across the board for both teams, like yeah. in how we've developed and how we've evolved. But uh, here comes Kim Bustable as the lead jammer, and uh, going up against is this uh, is this uh, Melf, I believe. Yes, <laughs> Miss Melf. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Number six, in her very determined style that she has. But walking back, she's. I know. Uh, I say God miss. I say there. miss before a lot of scares, like miss. miss yeah. Miss Busta, Miss <laughs> Melf is really her name. That's really it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she's on the outside, and I think Kim was a little Crazy. surprised about that. She knows Real Kim sudden right burst behind of speed her. There. She's working it. She's not lead jammer. She can't call it off. Busta can. And chooses And Bitter too. Glitter holding her up there. Busta That's calls it back in the pack. It's always right. interesting to see the dynamic when the when the not lead jammer is actually in, in front. Is in the lead here, and here's a replay of that action. And there she goes zipping through there. Kim She's Bustable, zippy. so she got a lot of yeah, just so lithe and uh, light on her feet, as you said. Uh, yeah, in the first a lot half. of like punch power. She's very good at that. Yeah. All right, setting up for the next jam here in uh, this second period of action. We got number 17, Jamie Lynn Smears for the Fairbanks Roller Girls. Going up against Peach Clobber. And these are going to be two very evenly matched jammers, I believe. Tell you what, there, yeah, and I think, <laughs> I think Jamie Lynn Smears knew it. She wanted to call that right away. She saw wow. uh, Peach Clobber coming up next to her and said, okay, I'm going nope, nope, so to live to fight work. another day. Live yeah. to fight another day. Neither of them scored any points on the jam. Is that correct? That's and right. I, yep. I, I think that the, she I think she did. She like recognized the disadvantage of like how everything was going, called it. Yep, exactly right. Derby One is an interesting sport. You can do that. <laughs> 120 to 87 is the score. Juno still maintaining their lead. Uh, that they uh, built really during a couple of just a couple of power jams made all the difference in the world during the first really period. Really put them ahead, and now Fairbanks has to take it back. And we're seeing Gory 40. out there for one of the first times. We haven't seen Gory as much yet. Now she's uh, out there for uh, Juno Roller Girls. 
Cordy and Mayhem. Mayhem fights out of the pack. Cordy's here on her scoring pass now. Cordy, who I understand may go by Q to I her see. Fairbanks stands. I'm learning I these see. things. You can call me Q kind Fights of stuff. Through and yeah. She calls it off. Nice. Not sure if Mayhem got any points on that three whistle pickup. We'll see here. I don't. Doesn't look like she did. 91 to 120. The score now. Fairbanks kind of nibbling away at the lead yeah, here a little bit. Yeah, don't let the like three digits to two digits throw you off. This this uh, like a couple power jams and they're back in control. Yeah. So. Juno really has to watch their back if they want to keep their lead. And here's one of the women you talked to. Virulence Factor is in uh, in here as one of the main blockers. And there she is going out against Jean-Claude Hot Damn. And oh, that Hot was damn senorita Psycho Senorita, really. V is still oh, waiting. Oh, but Hot Damn oh. got around V. And there you go. All right. Now Hot Damn's looking around for some direction from the bench coach. Looks like she, you really see her strategizing as she goes around the track. You can she's, see her thinking. You can like see the it. gears turning yeah. in her head. She's eyeing that pack at all times. Miss Mel coming around. Oh, and they took each Hot other out. The breaking two, through. The two Fairbanks blockers took each other out. And uh, and Jean-Claude Hot Damn just went right through the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure what that. I don't know. She's talking to someone in the crowd maybe. She's really good at focusing on more than one thing at once. Yeah. Hot Damn has an interesting story. <laughs> Check out a, a Derby Kind of Love next fall. You'll learn all about it. <laughs> yeah, and that's your <laughs> film documentary that, you're that I'm working on. Worked yeah. on, yep. She has to re enter behind the skater who knocked her out. She has to re enter again behind the skater who knocked her out. Now she's kind of getting stuck here. She's still the lead jammer, right? So she would she could call this? I believe she's lead jammer still. She could. The other jammer hasn't met the pack yet. No, I think the other jammer has gotten four points. I believe the other jammer got four points there. We'll see how this goes here. Yeah, let's look at this bump that happened right here. There they go. They took each other out. <laughs> and Jean-Claude Hot Dam was the beneficiary of that. Now here's... Yep, Psycho Senorita coming around. And it is exciting to like see these other jammers and the people on the Fairbanks team play because I've never met them before and I've never experienced them before. I know the Juno, Juno team so well, but what I'm seeing is like um, I'm seeing their characters come out and their strengths and weaknesses, and uh, I'd be excited to play them and play them again. I know yeah. that actually tomorrow for our scrimmage, if all goes well, we will be doing a mix-up scrimmage with the Fairbanks team. Just oh, for fun. there you go. Just okay. for fun. Nice. <laughs> so maybe I'll get a chance to. Yeah. That but because um, these yeah. girls look awesome. <laughs> well, they are awesome, and they're going to start their next jam here in just a second. We got a little bit of a conference of the refs here by our scoring table and by our broadcast table here. 128.95 is the score right now. They're talking over what happened during the last jam. And uh, Chicken Hawk in the red helmet there is the one that's kind of mm -hmm. leading the discussion. Talking to the other refs here. One of these refs is down from uh, from Fairbanks. Fairbanks. We got a ref from the North Pole right outside Fairbanks, and he practices with them. So actually, two refs. Um, one of them is still out on the court there. So two, a couple of the refs here are married. The damn ref is we here have, at the table, yes. and he, we actually interviewed him in the, at halftime. That's time. right. And we have a we have a Major P. Rick and Miso Nasty, our married couple that are. Mm -hmm. uh, that are refs for uh, Juno, and uh, Miso is also the Just sister, sister of Just Julie. <laughs> yeah. That's right. It's a great family game if you yeah. want to get into something. You know, I keep saying I'm, th I'm saying game because I'm trying to get into the habit of it. No, you're not. You, you <laughs> it's going to take me a while. <laughs> but I really don't envy these refs. They have a lot of responsibility on their shoulders. They're explaining the situation to QWERTY right now, and she's trying to say, look, you held up four fingers like I scored four. That's what I had seen as well. And I think that might be what they're talking about. I saw him hold up four fingers, but you said, no, she hadn't gone through the pack yet for the first pass. And I think that's the confusion that might be getting talked mm. about right here. 95-128 is what the score stands at right now. Still maintaining that pretty healthy it's lead not there. Like, I mean, it's fun with the glitter and the colors and the everything, but these girls take this game so seriously down to the nuances. And so it's really important. Like That's why I don't envy the, ref and envy the refs. It's a lot of responsibility you to get this right. Now there goes Kim Bustable, Kim Bustable coming Lee through. Jammer. 
Meanwhile, Jamie Lynn Smears is at the back of the pack. Now she's busted through, almost Ooh. busted through. Vertebraker tried to take her out there, but didn't get to her. Now coming well around done is by Smears. Kim Bustable. Got Bustable to beat. Go through her Busta team and she it calls before it. before Smears gets to the pack. Well, that was kind of the way you do it right there, right? Pick up the points and call it off. Yeah, so that was uh, interesting and well done. Another four points goes up for Juno. 132 to 95 now the score with Juno increasing their lead and uh, with just over, just under 20 minutes left now. It is one of those, it does get to down to that point where, okay, G Fairbanks has got to figure out a time when they're going to score their points, right? They've got to hopefully get one of those power jams and uh, start making up some points here. This this, uh, this is, they're, started, they're, they're not exactly running out of time yet, but it's getting down to there where they need so to start thinking about it. there's so many variables and so many factors. It's hard to keep that under control. Q is through the pack. I don't know if I call it Q, Q or QWERTY. I might go with Q. I like Maybe QWERTY. Maybe go with QWERTY. I like QWERTY, I'm too. Qwerty. Peach Clobber on her heels. Q is in, and she calls it off. She got a few points on that. I'm not and sure how many she picked up. The QWERTY fans over in the crowd are going crazy. They're holding up the keyboard. <laughs> I love that QWERTY. keyboard. <laughs> that was a good call. <laughs> Let's see him. There they are, going nuts. <laughs> there he is. Look how nuts he is. He's crazy. The wild man, I'll tell you. Look at him. An absolute madman. They're waiting for yep. her to pick up all the points. They're waiting for her to get a power <laughs> jam is what they're waiting for. They are. It's not fair. He, she wasn't even in at that moment. <laughs> Picking on Ty Keltner like that. He's a good guy. I know him well. You go, May. Oh. Who is lead? Who's lead here? We've got Rolling Apocalypse pointing out the lead jammer. Looks like it might be. Wow, that was exciting. You want to know how I know Ty? I was yeah, on. How do you know Ty? I was. I helped him on a Lego League team. <laughs> He's an amazing Lego collector. Did you see the Lego movie? I haven't I'm seen like it yet. Yeah. I keep thinking about just, seeing it. Yeah. It's worth a watch. All right. <laughs> that was that front that's that, not an that official, song that they came out That's not an official to, endorsement intro. from 360 North. No, not North. an official. No. <laughs> We're just just discussing. <laughs> All right. By the way, if you want to join the discussion, go to 360north.org or go to AK Derby hashtag AK Derby on any Twitter feed. And it's uh, pretty cool. You get to talk about. The rules, you know, like, or the players, the positions, the strategies. It's not, like, there's so many nuances to this game. You can't stop learning. All right. Oh, and Miss Melf gets hit, hit out there. But T is called for, I believe, a, black, a back block there. And uh, called for a back block. Hot Dam was trying to form the line back. But Titan Young and Hot Dam now go back up with Kim Bustable coming in hard here. Combustible is the lead jammer here, so she's the one who has the ability to call this if she wants to. If she pick up some points she here. She needs to pick up some points, though, and she's not to their line yet. Now she's stuck in the middle of it. Breaks she calls it. it as she, she calls gets. it. Nice job, Bustin. Nice job on that call. I believe you're also right she that was it was a nice. She sliding on the hips of another girl, picking up that girl's point, one hand calling it like nice. she was there. That but was, also, was I thinking. think, a nice play by Miss Melf, who I believe picked up two points during that whistle time oh. we were talking about. So that was, uh, that's why they both got two points in that jam. All right, 134 to a 99 now. Uh, so uh, Juno maintaining that 35-point lead over Fairbanks. And they're going to start the next jam right now. Peach Clobber and Cordy breaks Here through. Comes She's the really jammer right off the top. Man, she just kind of really powered through there quickly. Oh, and Peach Clobber getting some real hits there. And now she's through. Peach Clobber had a dominant jam in that first period. That got them a ton of points. She did, but and, what Cordy uh, just played was pretty clean. Yeah. I feel like there's um, there's a lot of competing energies in this gym right now. Yeah. So that was good. They picked up four points there, 134-103 now, the score. So a 31-point differential. With 15 minutes left in the game here, there's really time for anything to happen in this uh, bout. Yeah, but 30 points is not an unbeatable lead. Now they here they go. This back. Here they go for the next jam, but I do think that it's a time Fairbanks is going to have to really start thinking about getting these, really taking advantage when they get an opportunity to get a power jam. Bitter Glitter is in there now, as well as Vertebreaker for Juno, and uh, the 
Jamie Lynn Smears has been sent off, so Kim Bustable has an opportunity to Or uh, April get, Mayhem, I think. Sorry, it's, April it's Mayhem. April? It's April Mayhem in April. there, my bad. Who's in there? I'll tell you what, she had to fight through it, but now she is through it, and now this is an opportunity for Juno to kind of salt this one away a little bit, really get in a good lead position here. I don't want to speak too soon, but uh, April Mayhem is not the person I'd like to be <laughs> like That's fighting right. a power jam again. I know. I tell you, she's got she's the ability. Wily. Oh, and there it comes. <laughs> T hard. That was the exact as assistance that uh, April Mayhem needed at that moment. It was a little bit of help from T, and she laid a block on two other blockers. April Mayhem with that kind of fast foot movement she has. She's so hard to knock off balance. She's hard you know, to knock out balance. And a big help, too, is like how much blocker drills we've been running in practice lately. The Juno Roller Girls have really been focusing on trying to become a cohesive blocking wall. She's how can through. they help the jammer in the best possible way? I see, yeah. And uh, you can see that happening now. In that case, they were holding it back so that she could break the pack and get free. And Jamie Lynn Smears is now out of the pack coming on her first scoring run. But uh, April Mayhem is going to try to score some points first and get through. And Paying now she attention. calls it. She, she calls, calls it. it. It was a good call. And Jamie Lynn Smears got one, though. She got one while the whistles were blowing. <laughs> I'm really happy She's that sexy. you gave that tip of watching those skaters while those three whistles are blowing. And it's something we've been working on in practice, too, is like if you're a blocker and you hear those three whistles, you start running start because running. you don't want that jammer to get past you yeah. and get those three, like a point in those three whistles. So that's exactly what happened. And the second she did it, she held up a finger. I got a point. I got a point. So uh, 151, though, to 103, 17 points scored by April Mayhem in that jam. And that was exactly what Fairbanks did not need to have happen in this uh, bout. No, but with 13 minutes left, it's not totally unbeatable. No, no, they we'll can still take this back. They're going to have to really commit. Oh, Cordy goes down hard. Skatey Bright and Titan Young really hitting her there. And meanwhile, Kim Bustle, Kim Bustle gets on the outside and becomes lead jammer. That was all about Skatey Bright and Titan Young holding up what would have been the lead jammer of Cordy. And there you go, Combustible able That's to call it right it. there. And uh, boy, that was some really good looking blocking happening there that really caused the ability of uh, Combustible to use her speed to get on the outside and become lead jammer. Yep. Let's look at this hit right here. Ooh. <laughs> it's wild to watch that in slow motion, isn't it? Just really it's get the awesome impact game. of it. And it meanwhile, so there you go for. on the outside. Got around. All right, back to live action now. And starting off with this next jam with Kim with uh, Peach Clobber hitting the ground there. And Jamie Lynn Smears trying to get through. Hot damn, Holzer. Uh, sorry, not Jamie Lynn Smears. That's Miss Melf. And she is through. Miss Melf is the lead jammer. And Peach Clobber, though, right on her. Peach Clobber coming up. Ah, yeah. So I got to give a little bit of props to Juno in that last bout. Uh, that last bout jam there, last yeah. Jam. Holding the uh, holding the Fairbanks girl as a goat was a good plan. You really help your jammer out. Oh, that's another one of the things we've been working on. We've been working on the Caterpillar. I talked about that. Um, I've seen it uh, in variances in the gameplay, but... You, you, you mean a modified Caterpillar has been in play? No, 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 no. It's called like goading. It. Oh, that's a goading. You take one of the other player's blockers and you hold them, and they become so much weaker as a team structure. Oh, interesting. All right, we'll watch for that as well. Meanwhile, there goes April Mayhem. She's through, and that is tough. It's going to be tough. Jamie Lynn Smears... Wipes out Verta Breaker. Yeah, playing some offense as a jammer. Not a but bad idea. Mayhem is still through. Mayhem that was her scoring got through. pass. Oh, and just Julie blocks Jamie Lynn Smears just right out of the track. That is just classic just Julie block right there. T playing some offense there on Jamie Lynn Smears, keeping her from passing up the pass. Oh, Verta Breaker oh, and Berta. just Julie. Hitting him hard. 
but just Jamie Lynn Smears is through. April is still scoring points. She's not ready to call. Oh, oh she's man. not Look ready to call. Look at how it hard off. it is she's to get ready. her down. Boy. And now she's ready. <laughs> there are so <laughs> there many times when you're watching April Mayhem skate and you think, oh, she's, she's about to fall down hard. And, and she, she just kind of like teeters and then falls back into play. Such she's a great. Really interesting athlete to watch. Here she comes, coming in from the back. Boom. No, you can't have me. There you go. And she passes around here. That's what this is where uh, Jamie Lynn Smears gets through. Meanwhile, April Mayhem outside on the outside there trying to get through. If I have a derby crush on April Mayhem, it's because she pushes the envelope. I like to see that happen in <laughs> gameplay. Anyone who takes risks, like, I just feel like they push the game forward. All right, here comes QWERTY coming through. Oh, a nice move there. Very quick skates there by uh, QWERTY coming through, avoiding a block by Just Julie, and uh, declaring exactly lead where jammer. She is, coming up on the pack. And calls it before Busta gets there. Two points there, gained by QWERTY. It's a 54-point uh, bout here right now, 160 to 106, with uh, just a, just a, just under nine minutes left in this entire bout. Fun talking to Dr. Dreadful too at halftime, huh? Yeah, I like her. <laughs> she's such a. She's, such she's a, pretty great. Such a uh, monument of Juno. She's just she's absolutely such a, a pillar. Such a huge support to all of these community activities. Yep. And just hot damn, just immediately gets called into the sin bin. I don't know exactly what happened there. If that was a back block or what, but she just but was immediately called. But it does mean that called. now Juno is playing without a jammer and without one of their blockers. So this is a power jam for Fairbanks, and they're playing against three Juno players. And you've got Alpha out there. Alpha takes the some good hits. T is laying some hits on Alpha. And pushes through. Meanwhile. Peach is back Peach in from the box. Peach uh, has taken the uh, jammer ha uh, panty from Hot Dam, and she is now the jammer. Four points for Peach Clobber there. So uh, Fairbanks uh, had the advantage there for a moment, but once Peach Clobber came back onto the track, that advantage was neutralized. 164 to 106 now. Sorry, 111, 164 to 111. Fairbanks got some points in that jam as well. And uh, Fairbanks is wanting to call a timeout here, but timeout has has it been called yet? Looks like timeout is on the floor here. Well, so again, interesting here, uh, Tyrant Rex, <laughs> to see that. Uh, Juno has really maintained this lead throughout. And they're doing it by, I think, being really smart with their strategy, right? They're really holding back. They're employing some of these strategies that you, you've been talking about that, that the Juno Roller Girls have been practicing. The idea that the blockers are being very strategic and holding back the other team's blockers. They're not just going for the big hits necessarily. They're going for these strategic moves. And that keeps the other team in a, in a situation like this where the other team needs, needs to have big jams where they make up a lot of points. It's hard, they can nibble away at it, but then Juno seems to get come up with one great power jam, boom, it's back up to a 50 point lead. It is, and it's hard, it's, it, and, and a lot of it, I, man, I hate to say this, but a lot of it is your head game. You know, it's where you are mentally as a team, how you feel as a team, and, um, and it's, it's hard to say one way or another how anyone play. I've never seen Fairbanks play before, they're doing an awesome job, but just those little mistakes that cut your points down, those little mistakes that, like, Hold your jammer back so long that the other jammer can get through. That's the kind of thing that it, you know, maybe they're mistakes that you wouldn't make on a good day, but if they're happening, yeah, the game is legit. Yeah, and absolutely. And this is what's going on, you know. So that is what's ha that is that seems like that's happening out there right now. But it also seems like Fairbanks is fighting as absolutely as hard as they possibly can. You've got some really talented skaters out there. Oh with yeah. Jamie Lynn Smears is really uh, skating great, and yeah. Qwerty, of course, is really kind of the star jammer right now for yeah. the Fairbanks team. I would say. Qwerty Alpha and, and Gazelle from Hell is doing a pretty good yep. job. Yeah, they're all they're all really in there and in the mix and scoring points. But I think the strategy that Juno's employing here is really just keeping them from able to score 
a lot of points in big chunks. Yeah, they're like blocker cohesion. How can we do this? How can we keep like constantly thinking as a team? And we've been doing that a lot in practice. And I can see it happening on the floor, which is really exciting to see. It's also really effective in gameplay. The other thing that I've seen that I think has really affected the, the play right now is that Juno has not been penalized very much. There's only been a couple of instances where they have two people in the sin bin. Yeah. And so, and that just seems to be such oh. a turning point in bouts. When Especially you have in a power jam. If you've got more than one or two people like out of the game, Juno is scoring points on your team without even trying. So we're going to be back to live action here. Uh, we've got the next jam coming up. It's about uh, seven minutes left in this entire bout here. And uh, so uh, with, with uh, Juno ahead by over 50 points right now, Fairbanks is going to have to start making a couple of moves. Like we were saying, it, it was, it was uh, definitely uh, something that you, you could see um, Juno taking advantage of those power jams. That was great. Fairbanks hasn't been able to take advantage of them as much. During that time out, the Fairbanks uh, players and uh, captains were talking to the refs quite a bit. Not sure what that was about. Maybe trying to clarify something on either the scoring on, on some uh, rules that had been talked about or some calls that have been made. And we'll see if that affects uh, how uh, things play out here in the last seven minutes of this bout as this next jam is underway. Just Julie trying to catch up to QWERTY there. And QWERTY is declared lead jammer with April Mayhem coming up now from behind. Here comes April Mayhem. She's around through the pack now. QWERTY coming around with that one hand behind like a speed skater. And April Mayhem with that high step and style that she has. It just seems to get oh. her so much speed. QWERTY got through there, scored two points and called it. To me, I, d I just question that strategy right now, taking two you know, just two points, and and uh, you, you know, you're not. They could Although score two points so for every hard. jam, and they won't catch up. Uh, be, just be interesting to see if they, with the next, with six minutes left here, if they start risking it a little bit more. We'll see if they go for a little bit more high risk, uh, yeah, where they it, where they I stay mean, in longer, hoping that there's a penalty called, hoping that something breaks their way, yeah, and they're yeah, able to get a power yeah, jam. That's true. That's true. But with respect for uh, for the jammers that they've been up against. It's not always easy to take a risk with April yeah, Mayhem. I can imagine. <laughs> I can imagine. Absolutely right. Here Kim comes Kim Bustable. Bustable. They go from strength to strength with the jammers right now. I tell you something, it's really impressive to watch Juno play right now. They're, their jammers are all incredibly strong, great skaters. Their blockers are doing a good and job. And their blockers are really, really solid as well. Right now. There you go. That's that's that skatey bright, uh, Julie just Julie combo. combination that I've been talking about. It's just really fun to watch. How that's playing out, although that's not just Julie. That was Hot Damn ah. in there doing that. So that's that's uh, that's just Julie in there with Jean Claude Hot Damn, kind of employing some of those same techniques that we've been seeing from from uh, the blockers in Juno. You may be wondering why Smears didn't just rush up and try to pass her. Um, she knows that Busta can call the jam at any time. Also, if you try to pass a jammer when you're a jammer on the track, you have to know that they know that you're right behind them and that they might just hit you out. It's a dangerous move to employ. But. Well, Juno scored again in that one, 14 points there. Fairbanks did get four points in that in that uh, jam, but that's once again Juno kind of extending that lead. So interesting to see. We got five minutes left in this. We'll see if there's some more high risk tactics that start happening, and uh, see if Fairbanks can make it up. It's going to require a couple of power jams, I would say here, for them cool to make to up some happen. make up a little bit of uh, make up a little bit of the point disadvantage that they have right now for Fairbanks. Skating hard and working it hard, but uh, just with this point differential. Peach Clobber breaks through for there you go. lead jammer. There she is. And I got to think that, like, this is, this is to me would be a point where Peach Clobber will just take this jam to the full time limit. She's lead jammer. It's possible. She still hasn't called it off. She could just keep, if she can just sit there and match points for two minutes uh, with the other, with the Fairbanks. Cordy playing a little bit of offense there. And Peach calls it off okay. as soon as she gets calls it. Off. All right. So Juno with really what could be called a commanding lead at this point, 182 to 117. Interesting to see that Fairbanks, all their experience and, uh, and ability, and really not a weak player on their team. And, uh, and yet Juno able to really dominate this match so far. First and second half, uh, really, Juno has been the dominant team. All right, coming up next with the next uh, jam here. And coming through, here comes Gazelle. Yeah. 
She is the gazelle She's a from to watch. hell. And April Mayhem, she has the same kind of a uh, body style and some same tactics that April Mayhem has. There you go, she's able to well, get through. Calls it, she's like, mine, my point. Mine, mine, mine. There you go. Four points there for well Fairbanks. Gazelle from hell. 3.23 left in this uh, bout. And it's a 60 point game right now with Juno well ahead, well ahead. And probably time for maybe two, three more jams at the most. Um, here with just three minutes left in the bout. If you've got opinions about what's happening out there, make sure to get on Twitter and hashtag AK Derby, or you can go to 360north.org. Give all you, you, the insight that you have, any commentary you have about this, or ask any questions that you might have. We've got experts on hand waiting to answer your questions as well. Verda getting a chance to jam in this, in this bout. That's exciting to see. She is tough and tenacious, Verda Breaker is. But so is Q. Squirty coming Scores through there. Points. Here comes Verda Breaker coming back around. Yeah, just Julie ain't having it, I'll tell you what. She ain't having it. <laughs> she, she is really tough. Blocker she's a hard there. one to I'll get past. You. Yeah, it's and really she's always the last one you have to fight, like when you're so tired, and there she is. And just Julie just put on the jammer a panty a with a pile up. Pile and here she up, comes. Yeah. It's going to be fun to see just Julie as a jammer here. Thank you. But I got called. Call. So that's where they passed the panty. They passed the helmet between the jammers there. Yeah, so the pivot, which who is the one with the stripe on the helmet, right. um, can at any time uh, receive the jammer panty from the jammer. Sometimes it's necessary. Like when I say you get tired when you're out there jamming, you're slamming up against bodies and bodies are slamming up yeah. against you, and it's just um, sometimes that exhaustion, you can just There's take the off the panty. You can make there, yeah. make an, make eye contact or somehow communicate with your with your pivot that you need to make that exchange, and, and then they can take over jammer for as you. As we saw in that replay, she had just put that on that jammer hel that jammer jammer panty on her helmet, and then was immediately hit by a wall. <laughs> Would have been really fun. I was looking forward to seeing just really get out, out there out. in front <laughs> and uh, really show some of her speed because she's also a very fast skater. Oh yes. All right. Combustible going up against Jamie Lynn Smears. And here we go. Crowd responding to Jamie Lee Lynn Smears saying, hey, what do you think, Juno? And uh, crowd loving it. Jamie Lynn is lead jammer. Busta fighting the front wall here. Juno coming in to help. Forced outside there by Virulent. Skatey comes back in from the Aurora Project Sin Men. And here comes Combustible. She's not lead jammer. Jamie Lynn Smears is lead jammer. And she's through. She gets points there. Three points on that pass through. she goes. There's just 44 seconds left here, and I think what's happening here is Fairbanks is just willing to skate this one out. That's it. It looks like there might be time for one more jam. They're doing one more jam here. Oh, good. They've got 27 seconds left in the bout. They're lining up. Lynn Spears calls it. And that looks like it might be it there. Just 20 seconds left. 15 seconds left in the bout. I don't think they're going to have time for a jam, or maybe they will. Chicken Hawks looking at the time. Timeout. They call timeout to see if they can do one more jam. Eight seconds left on the clock, and Chicken Hawk was talking to the bench coach over at uh, Juno. They called timeout. That stops the clock and allows them to set up for one more jam. So we get to see one more jam of action here. What have you thought about this bout so far, uh, ty uh, Tyrant Rex? <laughs> um, I'm pretty excited to see Fairbanks play. This is actually my first time seeing Fairbanks play. So that's, for me, um, seeing the players, seeing the uh, strengths and weaknesses, but also like kind of what they're doing as a team, maybe how they've been practicing like up in Fairbanks. 
the jammer. There's some really good jammers that I understand. Uh, okay, as a skater, hopefully going to skate in the next bout and like continuing on to my roller derby career. Um, I can't help logging away, like who's jamming, how are they jamming, what do I see on the blocker line, and that kind of thing for my own personal information. So, so you can lay the hit maybe. a little harder next time you see him out on the track. Yeah, I love it. you I know. Love it. So it's cool to see how another team plays. Tuna's been playing each themselves all season, so this is. For me, that's what's most exciting. That's great, yeah. It's absolutely great to have other competition come in, especially a uh, team as uh, kind of legendary among Alaska circles oh, as the yeah. Fairbanks Roller Girls. Oh, yeah. So here it is. And I think Juno, I mean, it's obviously it's all about having a great time, but it's a lot about competition. And I think the Juno Roller Girls must be pretty proud of the uh, performance they've put on today here with really kind of, you know, uh, dominating this performance here tonight. Batty Duke, Jamie for the Juno Roller Girls. It's fighting to the front of the line. Broken the package, she's through. Batty Duke is through as the jammer. She's so excited. And we've got QWERTY <laughs> called out on a penalty. So it's a power jam for Juno right now. Batty Duke's first jam is a power jam. All right. Uh, she's got to be having fun with this. She's got to score some points here. She comes now, QWERTY's back in. No more power jam, but she is through on her scoring run as well. Daddy Duke coming around as the lead jammer. She's calling it. And that's it. That's oh, the last man. jam Good of game. the bout. I got to say, Cordy took that front line in style. Yeah, yeah. It has to be hard. She did a great job. Great job for the Fairbanks Roller Girls. That was so fun to see. And so fun to uh, share it with everyone here. Thanks to everyone oh, who's yeah. put in your comments. Let us know what you think about it right up to the bitter end here at uh, hashtag AKDerby on Twitter. Or you can also go on 360north.org. You can check it out there. The game will be uh, replayed as well on 360 North, so watch for that uh, in the program guides for 360 North. And uh, it's been a super fun bout, don't and you think? And the cool thing about Derby is, and I know that this is like this is a hard game to play. It might have been a hard game for the Fairbanks Roller Girls to lose. I'm sure it was because they all seem like excellent athletes. But at the end of the game, everybody gives each other a big high five. There's going to be I an after party. We all we love each other. Fives. There's all a right. lot of friends in this league. <laughs> <laughs> All right, they're going around. We're having a great time. Oh, there's your I love your derby my derby wife. wife. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's just fun to see and the community of women that make this happen. They're incredible across the board. Absolutely. I'm so stoked to be a part of it. I'm so stoked to see this kind of support. Like I'm, oh, I'm in love. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, again, a growing sport as we got to... Uh, talk to Jane oh, Bondage. Yeah. There's even the... Uh, there's Checking out the second ever All-State Alaska tournament this year is going to be a trip. Yeah, that'll Juno be really Roller exciting. Girls will be participating in that as well. And you can see the enthusiasm. The crowd has enthusiasm right now that uh, all of the skaters out there having a great time coming around. Just Julie's doing a little flair there as they're giving high fives to everyone. And... Uh, so fun to have these uh, roller girls coming down from Fairbanks as well. A great bout as well because it was actually something that at the very beginning it looked like, woo, Fairbanks, man, they really have some strategy. They've got great skaters out and there. And they do. And, and they, they do. do. And if it Juno was another has, day, another time, like a few more practices, you never know what's going to make the difference. But in this particular game, it was. I'll tell you, the this particular game, from my perspective, there was about three power jams that made the difference, and oh, that was yeah. really it. That was the difference and in so the bout. And so, like Juno, I I just love seeing our blockers and how they've grown. And this was the first All Star game ever. <laughs> so all these girls that created the Juno Roller Girls League right. are playing together now in this like cohesive team against other all-star teams in the state, which is yeah. really exciting for me to see. They're very exciting. I hope all of you enjoyed it as well for the entire 360 North team. I'm Andy Klein. Indy, Indy Klein. I almost said my real name there. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, <God>. Indy Klein. <laughs> and, uh, I'm Tyrant Rex. And we'll see you next time at the Derby.